Hello, it's still raining outside. I've come in into my little sheltered area, so it's not so noisy. So this chapter should be able to hear even better. So we've just finished reading chapter 19. Chapter 19, his friend Ted has now met Flicker. Well, sort of met Flicker. He's managed to poo on his face while Flicker's been flying around the classroom exploring. That's sort of a, an introduction of sorts, isn't it? And Flicker has also pooed in Mr. First's coffee cup. <gasps> and they've had to leave the classroom before even sorting it out. So potentially, something could go wrong with that. Chapter 20 is called The Great Idea. Over the course of the afternoon, I watched Ted pass from dazed disbelief to about uncontrollable excitement. When the last bell finally rang, he dragged me, Cap and Kai to the corner of the park, to the little cop to the little copse of trees where we made our dens. Well, show them then, go on. Show us what? asked Cat. Yeah, said Kai. Dude, you've been off the scale weird all day. What's going on? And now you've got Ted doing it too? Ted was grinning from ear to ear like the Cheshire cat. And before I could say anything, he blurted it out. It's true, he's only gone and got an actual real life dragon. Cat and Kai stared from Ted to me and back again, obviously trying to suss out where the wind up was heading. Then, figuring they should just play along, Kai called our bluff. Okay then. Show us. Show us your dragon. So I did. I opened up my pocket and I let the twins peer inside to see the glowing red dragon nestled there. His warm, smoky smell floated up towards us. And this time, there was no talk of me telling stories. There was a moment of stunned silence. And then... This is the most awesome thing in the world ever! Kai shrieked with excitement. The totally awesomest, agreed Kat in an awed whisper, her eyes not leaving Flicker for one second. And they weren't wrong. I stood there soaking up this glorious moment. The moment there, sorry, miss, I lost my sentence. I'm gonna read that bit again. And they weren't wrong. I stood there soaking up the glorious moment, the moment when for once I had the coolest pet in the world. But Flicker didn't seem that happy with all the attention. He fluttered up on and sat on my shoulder. He curled his tail around my ear and he lay his head against my neck. I scratched him behind the horn, trying to turn the huge smug grin across my face into more of a look of cool casualness. What else can he do? Does he breathe fire? What's he eat? Is he going to get any bigger? Where does he come from? asked Cat, unleashing a whole rumble of questions. It's more sparks than fire at the moment, I said laughing, and he eats leaves and vegetables. I didn't want to admit that for the rest of it I was about to, as clueless as they were. They were looking at me like I was the expert dragon whisperer or something and I didn't want to spoil it. It didn't take Flicker long to get used to the others and soon he was fluttering around hand to hand. He's so cute, said Cat, running her fingers down his spiny back. Do you think he understands stuff, said Ted. I mean... Could we train him? Do you think we could train your dragon? They tried calling him from one to the other and although once or twice Flicker flew from hand to hand to each of the persons that had called him, mostly he didn't. He's still a baby, I said, feeling like I wanted to stick up for him. Or as daft as Dexter, said Kai. Dexter was their terrier. They'd had ideas of training him up to do cool circus tricks when he was a pup, but the most they ever got out of him was to sit and to stay, and now he didn't even often do any of those. Can he come home with us? Kai said suddenly. Uh, no, I said. Why not? You've had a turn. You've had him for ages. 
he's not a toy. Um, I said crossly. I made out that I was sticking up for his rights as a majestically free and independent animal, but actually I was overcome by the very deep feeling that I didn't want anyone else having the coolest pet any of us had ever owned. I didn't say that, said Kai. I just mean we should share him. It was true that we did share most of our stuff. We shared lots of toys, books, games. We all got swapped from house to house. But Flicker, Flicker was different. He's mine, I said quietly. Kai scowled. It reminded me of how Lolly looked just before she lost it. Of course, Kai was old enough not to be supersonic, but I could see he was pretty ticked off. It was at this point that Ted had his brilliant idea, or not so brilliant idea. Hang on, didn't you say there were others that had hatched out of those weird fruits? Yeah, I said, knowing exactly where this was heading. Well then, we could all have one, couldn't we? <gasps> what do you think? Could they all have one? Do you think that would be a sensible idea? Do you think they'll find them? This takes us up to chapter 21, and chapter 21 is called The Long Wait.